Welcome to this video on the topic of trigonometry. In this video, we're going to have a look at how we can use trigonometry to calculate unknown side lengths within right angled triangles when we're given at least one side length and an angle of interest. Over here we have a right angled triangle. We have an angle of interest and we have a given side length. The other two side lengths are unknown. Now what we're going to do to be able to compute the values of x and y here is we first start off by labeling this triangle in the convention that we looked at in the previous lesson. So that being we identify our angle of interest and we call it theta. Opposite theta, we have our opposite side. And then identifying the right angle, we go opposite the right angle and this is our hypotenuse. And then finally the leftover side is the adjacent side. Okay, we've got it all labeled. The next step that I recommend is listing all of the quantities that we have in this triangle. So I'm going to go theta, and that's equal to 30 degrees. Next is the opposite. We have a value of x. Our adjacent is also unknown, assign the value of y. And the final quantity, our hypotenuse, has a value of 24 millimeters. Alright, next step is we need to pick the quantity we want to solve for. In this case, I'm going to start with x because it's the top one on our list. So I'll say 4x, and then I need to decide which ratio is going to be useful for deducing the value of x. So what I have in my list is I have theta, I want to find x, and I have a value of 24. So I've got theta, the opposite, and the hypotenuse. So we're looking at so. We have so, it stands for sine, so we have sine theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. Subbing in the values, I have sine 30 degrees is equal to x over 24. Now the way in which we solve for x is we need to rearrange this equation. Now next to x we have a divide by 24. Now to reverse divide, I'm going to times. Multiplying this out, 24 appear on the left and we write this like algebra the 24 and the sign just sit together like this and it means 24 times sine of 30 degrees then on the right hand side I've got the 24 that's come in and it's multiplied by x over 24 now what we understand from fractional multiplication is this is a 24 over 1 and that's going to cancel that. So we effectively just have x on the right, 24 sine 30 degrees on the left. And then rearranging this, I can simply move the expression on the left to the, or expression on the right to the left and vice versa. So it's x equals 24 sine 30 degrees. And now we get to the point where we need to use our calculators. So what I'm going to say is up we come and then I'm going to go into run matrix mode. Putting in this expression on the right here, we go 24 sine in parentheses, I'll write 30, then I'll go execute. This gives us a side length of 12. And of course this has units and the units are millimeters. And thus we solve the unknown quantity that is x. Now, the next job we have on our agenda is to solve for the value of y. So we have theta. We sort of have x, but we're going to ignore it for now because we've already got this pre-calculated 24 for the hypotenuse and we want to solve for y. Now, looking at the values we have, we have theta, the adjacent and the hypotenuse. So that gives us ka. Ka standing for cosine theta is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Filling in the values, still working with 30 degrees. The A becomes a unknown Y and it's 24 still on the bottom. Rearranging such that Y becomes a subject, I simply multiply by 24. And because I did this exact same step in the previous example, I'm just going to skip to the final rearrangement, which is Y equals 24 cosine of 30 degrees. So you don't have to show these intermediate steps in here and here. You can simply go times 24 and go from this line down to here. Now we're at the step where we need our calculator once more. 
So I say up we come and I put in the new expression. And what I get is this strange result. If you're using one of the older calculators, you won't have this problem. But if you have one of these new Casio calculators, it gives you this strange symbol here we call the radical symbol. We read it as 12 root 3. So this isn't actually, or this is actually a valid result we can write. So 12 root 3. Now, if you're not comfortable working with this particular value and giving it as the answer, then you can go down and you find this button that says SD, click it, and it's going to turn it into a decimal. So we go from our radical form into our decimal form. Now, the reason we choose this form over this form is because this one is exact. This is an approximate. So if you want to go exact, use this form. Otherwise, use this form, but you need to pick the decimal places. For me in this example, I'm going to go to two decimal places just because I like to be succinct. So I go seven, eight, four. We see the four is less than five, so it's going to become 20.78. And of course, it's still millimeters. And thus, this is our result. So we solve the unknowns in the first triangle we have over here. X was 12 millimeters, Y was 20.78 millimeters, or 12 root three millimeters. Moving on, question B. We're presented with another right angled triangle. This triangle has been rotated, so it's not in the form that we saw over here. On top of that, we've got another unknown value, that being this value called phi or phi, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Now, what I'm going to do to analyze this triangle is I'm going to first label it. So 65 degrees, that will be the angle of interest because it's given to me. Opposite the angle of interest, we have our opposite side. And then identifying the right angle, which is here, I'm going to go opposite to find my hypotenuse, which has no quantity assigned to it, nor a quantity we actually want to find. The leftover side is, of course, the adjacent. Now, the final quantity we have in this triangle, seen over here, we have to find this because it's an unknown, and we like to find unknowns. All right, now next step is I'm going to list all of the quantities. So we've got theta, which is equal to 65 degrees. We have the opposite, which is Z. And we have the adjacent, which is equal to 19 kilometers. I can write the hypotenuse, but because it doesn't actually have a value, I'm just gonna leave it at so what we have is theta, the opposite, and the adjacent. Now the first thing I'm going to try and find here is the simplest one, which is the value for phi. Now phi itself isn't going to use any of the trigonometric ratios. Rather, we're going to use a property that we know to be true for all, or all triangles, in fact, in that the sum of the angles within a triangle have to equal 180 degrees. Using this property, we can say that the addition or the sum of phi, theta, and the right angle, which is of course 90 degrees, must all equal 180 degrees. Rearranging to solve for phi, we simply take theta and 90 from both sides, which is going to leave us with an equation that says phi is equal to 180, take theta, take 90 doing some of this in my head. 180 take 90 is simply just 90 degrees. Take theta. We know theta to be a value of 65 degrees. So therefore the value of phi is going to be 25 degrees. Simple as that. So not really a trig problem because we don't use the ratios, but we can use this sort of deductive reasoning for problems coming up in the future. So hold on to that thought. Now, solving for the unknown of Z, we actually have to use trig for this. So we've got theta, the opposite, and the adjacent. So what that's going to give us is TOA. TOA standing for tangent, or tan, theta, is equal to the opposite divided by the adjacent. Subbing in the values, we're going to go tan of 65 degrees is going to be equal to Z over 19 kilometers, leaving out the units just for now. Rearranging, we're going to go times 19 on both sides. Then I'm just going to skip down to the final form. 
So Z is going to be 19 tan of 65 degrees. Now I come to the point where I can't progress unless I use my calculator. So I say up we come, shift it over, and we're going to go 19 tangent of 65 degrees, which gives us a side length of 40.7456 or two decimal places. We see the five, so the four turns up one to a five, so 40.75. And the units, of course, are kilometers. And thus, solving our final problem using the trigonometric functions and ratios to solve for unknown side lengths.